In this video, I'm gonna show you how to dynamically shift tools and knowledge based upon a variable inside of Copilot Studio. So you may be asking yourself, why would I even want to be able to do this? Like, why is this video even being recorded? And Dwayne, what are you going on about? Well, the thing is, is that a lot of people may want to shift content or tools or knowledge based upon a variable or some sort of calculation or formula. And the reason you'd potentially want to do this is you might have a scenario where you want to look at the user's profile and depending on what country of origin they are coming from, you might want to decide to send them to a different set of tools or a different set of knowledge because benefits in the US might be different than benefits in India or in the UK. These are scenarios where you might want to dynamically be able to shift to the right set of tools or the right set of knowledge for a particular use case. And it doesn't have to always be for regions. It could be that it's a different set of tools depending on uh, hotel properties or things of that nature or a specific brand of product that you're trying to work on. But the idea is that we might have a situation as a maker where we want to go and actually shift these tools based upon some sort of calculation. And I'm gonna show you examples of this and let's talk about first how it works. So let's get, take a look at that first. So if we look at Copilot Studio and how it actually works with the orchestration engine, one of the key things is gonna be that we have agents. And when we talk about agents, we're talking about child agents in this particular scenario. So in a child agent, this is going to be a logical group of tools and knowledge that you can bring together. And I'm actually gonna double click this a little bit so that you can see the power of a child agent to be able to group things together into a logical container. And so let's look and open up a agent or a child agent a little further to explore what's inside of a child agent. So now that we're double clicking inside of a child agent, and you'll see over here that we've got a lot more information in a child agent than just having information on tools and knowledge. There's also things like there are instructions, there's a description. You're gonna also have other pieces like, do you want web search enabled? Do you want to have inputs? Or do you have data that's gonna come back, which is gonna be basically outputs that you wanna create as part of your agent? And again, these child agents are just a subcomponent of your parent agent, all within the same project. So the beauty of this is now we can take and not only take these different tools and be able to combine them or the different pieces of knowledge and combine them into a this logical container, but I can also give it additional insights like how do I want this to behave? How should this group of tools behave? How should this group of knowledge or just the combination of them behave together? And not only that, what type of inputs does this agent need and what kind of things is it going to spit back out on the backside? So again, these are sort of really key parts of the power behind a child agent. I'm gonna do a separate video that's gonna be about the importance of being able to use instructions and descriptions and things like this to be able to leverage child agents to really, in a sense, you could build agents where you don't even need topics anymore inside of your agent and make it much more flexible and much more powerful. But that's a subject for a different video. Today, what we wanna do is now that we understand what's inside of these child agents, we wanna figure out how do we pivot this information to be able to dynamically use these groupings when we want to be able to apply them in a certain scenario based upon either a formula or a variable. And so let's go into a scenario that might be an example and talk about how we might want to be able to handle this. Okay, so now let's just imagine a scenario where we have users that some of them are coming from the UK, some of them are coming from the US, 
And when we go and we're gonna go talk to Copilot Studio, what we want it to do is we want to automatically shift to the correct set of tools for the UK versus the US user. So as you'll see, we could basically make a determination and we're gonna need Copilot Studio to look at which particular users coming in and then may able to adjust it to be able to say the correct tool set for one is to go this direction versus the other. So imagine you come in as a UK user, you need to get the answers to questions around knowledge or information about products rather that are for the UK market because there might be differences about your product catalog in the UK market versus the US market. A great example of this would be what prices. So prices in the US are gonna be in US dollars where prices in the UK are going to be in British pounds. But there's also potentially some variants and different models that are available in for products in the UK that might be different in, than in the US just because of product availability. So how could I potentially do this? And I'm gonna show you how we could actually shift this information based upon a variable that we could set coming in from the user. So let's take a look at how we would do this. So now we're inside of Copilot Studio and you'll see that this is my advanced authoring agent that I've been using for some videos just to be able to showcase some different scenarios. So what I wanna do here is I wanna start off with, I need to make sure that I can pass the information in on where is the actual user coming from. So an easy way to go do that is that I can go into the topics and I can go to system topics to the conversation start topic. And as you can see right here, I'm setting a variable of global.location to UK here. So in the case of this, we've now got it set so that it's a, we're indicating that the user is coming from the UK inside of a variable. Now, when I do this, I also want to point out that we've got an agent set up over here and we've got one for the UK and you'll see here that it says that it's the UK, it's giving information. Matter of fact, even here, it's actually a typo here. So we should probably make sure that this says United Kingdom just as well. And you can see that once we've got this in, and we've got this saved, you'll see in here, we've got information saying that it's about the UK, all of that. And then the knowledge is using the UK website from Microsoft to be able to answer questions about Microsoft products or Surface products. And notice that we've given instructions to make sure that it knows that this is to get information about Microsoft Surface products. But we've also even got the orchestrator saying, hey, this is what we want this to do. So again, child agents focusing it in, we are only gonna go to this child agent when we wanna talk about Surface, uh, Surface products. And then in the case that it goes to the UK version of this, we'll get the UK answer. Now, if we switch over and we look at the US one, you're gonna see that same information, except we're gonna shift to the US market website to be able to answer these questions. And we're also gonna make sure that we give the instructions and say that this is in the United States. So now if I come in and I actually ask a question, keeping in mind that we've got it set to the UK right now, and I say, what are the sizes and prices of the Surface laptop? What you're gonna see is it's gonna to go to the UK based version. It's gonna to go to the knowledge that's associated with that get the answers back and then answer this question. Now notice that what's happening here is that it's answering the question and you can see that it's answering in British pounds and you can even see that the information here with these different locations that it's coming from are actually references that are against the UK based website. Now, if I go in and I change, let's go into our topic now and let's go to the system topic, go to conversation start, and let's shift this to say US, and we'll go ahead and save. Now that we've done that, and we get a new uh, conversation started, so we can get this new variable that's been set to the US, now what we can do is we can ask the same question to this agent, and then what's going to happen now 
is we are going to see that it goes to the US based version and it's going to get an answer and we're no longer going to see British pounds. We're going to see US dollars as the response coming back from the agent because of the fact that we're using the US based answers. And you can see we've got answers back and the answers are coming from the US based website with, with a lot of different information about the pricing and everything in US dollars. And you can see there's a whole bunch of other things that are surface products that may not be offered in the UK market. Not really sure what the US versus uh, UK markets of surface availability, but you can see the cool thing is, is that we're shifting between the different child agents based upon a variable. Now, how did we actually do that? Now, if you think that the reason that we did it is based upon the description, it really doesn't apply to this because of the fact that we would have to say what are the prices in the US market. But, and then I would have to say something like in the UK market, and then it would do it. Otherwise, you would probably be in some sort of disambiguation world, but that's not how this is actually working. The way this is working is if we go into the agents, and let's just look at the UK agent first. What you're going to see is that there is this advanced setting here that we can do. And this allows us to be able to come in and set all the different pieces of information or the conditions that need to be validated before this agent will be called. And in this case, what you're seeing is that global dot location uh, variable is equal to UK it's going to shift and go to this particular agent is in play. And you'll even see here that not only can you do this, you can go from a builder to a formula as well. So you can write a power effects formula to be able to validate something and you can have additional conditions as well. You can also even do priorities and priorities uh, will give you the ability to say, what is this priority versus other qualifying triggers and things like that. And so with the lower number uh, is being the higher of the priorities. So if I did have two agents that would fire and I gave one priority one and one priority two, the priority one one is going to win out whenever it's going to orchestrate. Now, if we look at the US based version of this, you're going to see the exact same thing, but you're going to see that I'm looking at that variable and trying to shift to the US and this is in play in the case that there's the US. Now this is super valuable because it's not just whether we want to do this off of a region or a location. It could be based upon a hotel property location. All of these different things are in play. And not only that, because of this, we can even go into our instructions and be able to add additional inputs and things around our instructions that explain how we want to behave when we are inside of this. So we can look at tools and topics and all of these different things and even variables that we want to be able to handle in the case that we are trying to do some things and be able to shift the conversation. So now we've got the ability to say this child agent is in play when there's this particular variable. And then once we get there, we can even wrap instructions around the different pieces of knowledge and tools that we're going to use for that particular market's specific needs. So again, super valuable here. Well, I hope you guys found this video to be super helpful. And as always, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this. And you can always try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.